सेशन literature that is not literary we are going to start that session in next 2 minutes and all the fiction as well as non fiction fans are requested to please come and join us a guest are here and bahut sari baatein karne wale hain gap shap karne wale hain tricks and tips of writing seekhne wale hain so let us see let us explore their life and their way of writing non fiction books so we'll just wait for 2 to 3 minutes more and we'll start the session thank you Okay so let's start the session um, a very good evening to all the literature and non literature fans fiction and non fiction fans i your host for this session lippy goel welcome all the storytellers journalists freelancers students and uh, lover literatures and i don't know a lot of social media enthusiast people are here students are here bloggers are here and just in case i have missed out on any on literary creator any fan of literature a very very warm welcome to all of you i have three special guests over here who are non fiction writers and this is a special session which has been organized so let us i'll just brief you about them i'll introduce you introduce you to them and then we'll have a talk about it and then the session will be open for q and a well i have the um, derek of brian of gujarat like i would like to tell him a man of varied interest a passionate quiz master a recipient of gyan puraskar by government of gujarat a marketing professional with more than two decades of experience in sales and marketing advertisements a columnist with a reputed publication so we have mr sanjay chakravarti over here please welcome him with a huge round of applause सुबह इनका एक बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग क्विज सेशन भी था डीएनए uh, में इनके एवरी आई थिंक वीकेंड्स पे इनके क्विज क्विजेस भी आते हैं विच आई ऑल्सो ट्राई टू अटैम्प मेरा जनरल नॉलेज काफ़ी बड़ा है उससे सर सो आई एल नाउ वेलकम माय नेक्स्ट गेस्ट वी हैव अ फाइन ऑथर अ कलमनिस्ट अ वोरेश स्पीकर एंड अ हम्बल टीचर अपार्ट फ्रॉम राइटिंग वेरियस बुक्स ऑन सर्विस टैक्स he has also written the book the game changer tsc which was an eye opener and first of its kind he is also penning down two books currently please welcome monish bhalla hello 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 check okay 
and the very beautiful and the lovely lady smiling here i have to welcome her as well where she has worked as a dean and business administrator at gls university she is also a visiting Hola. faculty at iim ahmedabad and maika she has more than 16 years of corporate and academic experience she is the co-author of best seller book corporate reputation decoded and has contributed various chapters on corporate reputation to various international publications well her favorite literary genre is crime fiction please welcome dr avni desai with a huge round of applause a warm welcome to all of you and uh, first let's talk about your books because there are a lot of people and i'm not very sure if everybody has read your book so why don't you just brief them what all you have written and what is that your book comprises of uh okay good evening everyone uh, so my book is uh, called uh, corporate reputation decoded and uh, basically it's uh, a practitioner's handbook on how to build and maintain corporate reputation Uh, corporate reputation incidentally is one of the growing fields of research all over the world uh, oxford university even has a center for corporate reputation dedicated especially to research on this area but in the indian context uh, sadly there wasn't any reference book or anything that could guide students or managers on this area my co-author and i offer a course uh, on this subject at iim ahmedabad to second year students and uh, in the initial years we found that it was very difficult Uh, to get indian cases examples and then we decided why not just go out and write our own book so we worked for about 2 years and this uh, is a very interesting mix of theory uh, on building strategizing and maintaining corporate reputation and we have what makes the book special uh, according to the viewers uh, is that uh, there are a lot of uh, caselets about indian companies and uh, the cases uh, relate the theory of corporate reputation to practice and we've written it in a tone that is not a typically academic uh, research kind of a tone but it's more of a handbook practitioner's handbook kind of a tone so um, right from c suite uh, managers to you know even students people can pick it up and get tips on how to build their reputation um sanjay sir if you could you have written i think three books now yeah, four, books. four books now yeah four books so if you could just uh, yeah. tell us in just yeah what even yeah i have uh, actually written my experiences in this four books the first book was called half glass full which was the experiences of my sales tenure when i started my career and i always felt that you know the the moments which i hated the most which when i look back i love the most so i thought of writing those and these are 12 experiences which will be written on the basis of you know my first experiences in the job the second uh, book which i wrote was marketing tidbits which was on the various lectures which i have been giving it to various places and the collect yeah including your university where we had got an opportunity to to deliver sessions and that was compiled in the form of a book then when i proceeded in the area of marketing communication advertising branding i realized that there is lot of myths which are prevailing in the market which people don't know before they want to make the career into advertising and branding so the third book was uh, called as on your marks before being on your marks get set go so it was written basically what you need besides academic qualification to be a successful person in advertising and media where i have included uh, not only me but there were some 19 other people stalwarts from the industry who wrote in that book and recently i launched a book on it's a digital book which i have launched on amdabad quiz so there are a lot of interesting aspects of amdabad which was compiled in this book and it was it got released yeah lovely um monish sir if you could also share some insights of your book sure is it working is it working yeah my writing journey started somewhere around uh, 2003 and 2003 i thought of penning down a book on a very interesting subject at that time service tax uh incidentally I, in fact i wanted to know something about service tax i didn't find any book on that so i thought why should i not attempt a book on service tax so 2003 i wrote a book on service tax and uh, at that time i was working with the uh, government department 
I went to the, the then Chief Commissioner of Gujarat. Uh, okay, sir, I have written a book and I would like you to do the honors. Okay. So his first reaction was, Tumne ka book likha? <laughs> first reaction. The whole day you are working here, you are doing so many cases, you, know, you are busy the whole day, I see you around, you know, doing your job. When did you find, to write, find time to write this book? So I told him, sir, you have seen me every day, except those Saturdays and Sundays which government gives the holidays. So those 52 Saturdays and 52 Sundays, I have not given to my family, I gave to this book. And in one year I created a book on service tax. So that is how my journey started. On, and thereafter, I think I have written now, the sixth book is coming. Uh, I wrote a book recently on GST. Uh, this was the GST Game Changer book, which was announced in the last Vibrant Gujarat. And uh, this book is a vision book on GST. I visualize a lot of things which will happen in GST. So, when I wrote this book, a lot of people started asking me questions. How can you write a book on GST when there is nothing on GST? Okay. So my uh, answer to them was, why do people want the authors to always answer your queries? Why can't an author write questions? So this book is full of those questions which are still unanswered. Out of this book, I was just speaking to Avni the other day, uh, just, just in the morning, in fact, that uh, one of the chapters from the book, I think, somewhere in Tamil Nadu, the late Jayalitra ji must have, or somebody has given that, and a government descent note was given on that verbatim. So that's, this is how a book, you know, works. And this is how I think my work has reached where it should have been, you know. It has gone to the, those corridors where it should have been. Okay. Lovely. So, um, I think somewhere you have answered the next question I wanted to ask is, uh, all of you are from corporate background and have like um, almost more than a decade of experience. So, how do you find time? Like, how do you find time to write a book? Like, so it takes a lot of time and rewriting, first draft, second draft. So, when is it that you get time to write the book? And how do you manage to get that time? It is, of course, difficult because with, uh, and uh, let me tell you, academics is uh, uh, no less heavy a profession than mainstream corporate. But uh, one has to, of course, find the time. Uh, as Monishi said, he sacrificed his uh, weekends. I sacrificed my sleep. I think there was about a year and a half, more than that, when I uh, slept only for about three, four night hours a night and I would be working on this. Of course, we, since we were two of us working on this, we had sort of split up uh, some of the areas. And, uh, but that, in fact, I think that, that involves more coordination because then you need to, once you finish working on your individual bits, then you need to sit together and make sure that it is seamless. But since we've been colleagues for a very long time, it, uh, the, the, the stitching process was not uh, that difficult as well. But, one has to make time. So either sleep less or you know spend less time with family, as he says. But in my case, it was sleeping less. <laughs> Sanjay yeah, sir? Yeah, I can tell you that, you know, the cliched answer that, you know, you need to have a passion to do this. <laughs> right? But I tell you honestly, when I was, you know, narrating these stories to a lot of youngsters, a single story used to get them inspired, motivated. So it's like instead of going 10 places, meeting 10 people and giving the same story, so it's better that I write something. So that forced me in writing that and then putting in the paper. One thing happened in the process was very interesting that I started honoring, respecting and saluting all the writers. It will only happen when you start writing it. So you know, you have to name it, you have to write it, you have to edit it, you have to show to people, you have to combine it, design it and then print it. So you will you will have a lot of respect towards people who write fictional stories or you know, write books with 400 pages and all those. My first book was of 60 pages and I, I knowingly did that because youngsters don't have time to read. So it's better that I divide into chapters and 60 pages can be over any time. And you know, the lesson which I wanted to give or the message which I wanted to share with them goes perfectly to them. So that was the reason. But yes, again, it's, a, it's, it's your own interest because you know, you want to reach to many people giving this message. So book is a very good medium to do so. So that helps you, motivates you to write. So you would like to say something? I think you've Somewhere answered the question, yes, but do you want to add something to it? As she rightly said, you know, writing book is uh, 
not so easy. But then, uh, slowly, I think you get the knack of writing. Uh, with the sixth book out, you know, my, my seventh, sixth book being out, you know, that knack of writing is there. So, uh, you, as, as many books you start writing, your speed will increase, you can have the time management done. Uh, so, I think uh, that, that, that's what I want to add. You know, maybe the first book is always difficult, the first step is always difficult, you know. So, like they say, the baby steps are always difficult. Uh, so and you know, oh, I want, what I'd like to add is that in case of us academicians, we're already doing a lot of writing. You know, we, uh, as academicians, part of our uh, uh, daily routine involves either writing for the class or writing for research. So as such, the writing process itself is a very familiar one. But uh, it's only that when you are working on a book, then the scale uh, sort of goes up drastically. And uh, therefore, it becomes more difficult. Otherwise, writing is a part of an, any academician's uh, daily life. Okay. Um, moving on. Um, so, you know, I, when I had attended uh, the sessions over here in the Lit Fest of a couple of authors who write fiction, they said uh, travel helped them. While they were traveling, they saw something and that inspired them. And then they started doing research and writing about it and all. And put points together, etc. Mountains inspired, lakes inspired. But when you write non-fiction, what is it that really inspires you? What kind of, uh, like where do you get the inspiration to write non-fiction? That's what I want to know. Well, I have a fiction writer in my own family. So, <laughs> I, I can understand what you're saying. But uh, I guess in case of non-fiction, it's more of uh, filling the gap, uh, providing the answer to a need that exists either uh, in your own mind or as an academician for your students. As I mentioned earlier, we were offering a course on corporate reputation and uh, we were looking high and low for a book that mi might help our students to understand these concepts in the Indian context. Uh, there, were, there were lots of works uh, coming out of uh, the US and the UK and again most of them were academic works. So in a nutshell, if I try to dis distinguish between an academic work and a book that is a a practitioner's handbook or something that Sanjay ji writes or Monish ji writes is basically the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the tone, the narrative. Uh, academic writing or research work is usually very heavy and it tries to come up with new concepts but the audience is largely academicians and scholars. Whereas when you try to come up with a non-fiction book that is aimed uh, either at uh, professionals or students like Sanjay ji writes for, then you have to be careful that you don't slip down into that very, very academic kind of a writing. So in my case, I would say the inspiration came, of course, from the fact that we wanted our students to get a much better understanding of what this concept is. It's a very abstract concept. Reputation is something that all of us understand. Everybody's worried about their personal reputations. Warren Buffett has said it takes years to make a rep reputation and a, a second to ruin it. So. It's something that all of us identify with, but the moment when you have to translate it into the corporate context, is it image, is it identity? There are so many minute nuances to it. So we wanted our students to be uh, thorough with it, and enjoy it as a course. And of course, uh, we found when we talked to a lot of uh, uh, people in the corporate sector, even they felt that this is something that would help them. And uh, uh, during our research, we talked to, uh, for different chapters, whether it was leadership or it was corporate social responsibility or it was crisis management. We spoke to a lot of people at some of the top firms in India, some of the top companies in India. We, spoke, we have people from TCS, we have people from Wipro, we have, uh, you know, from the Reliance companies. Everybody has sort of contributed their ideas, their incidents to the book. So I feel it was more of a filling a need. For us, the inspiration came from, from fulfilling a need that existed. And that gives a lot of satisfaction now that the need is fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. um, so yes. For what? me, actually yes. the first book was my experiences. True. So there was no scope of fiction there. So I was writing my experiences. So those experiences were, you have to remember those experiences. Yes, but like what I want to know is what inspired you to write that first book also. I mean, why you wanted to share your experiences? Yeah. What made you, what got you that process thought, you know, yeah. that Let's just share the experience. Yeah, because what I told in the in the earlier beginning of the session is that ki lot, I used to read these stories of my experiences of sales to people, to the newcomers in the industry. Right. So they always used to tell me, why don't you write a book? So 
so those the first book was not a fiction but was a experience but second book as you rightly said the fictional writers they travel so we observe also stories of marketing when we travel i'll give you an example of my second book a uh, story in that it's called 90 seconds sales pitch so you know you go to a traffic signal here you go to a signal and you see a guy selling their balloons in 90 seconds so what are the things which he uses to sell that balloon in 90 seconds because after 90 seconds the light goes from red to green so what are the strategies he's using it so you also observe those stories and you narrate those stories in the form of a book so probably so, we can say observation is what yeah, inspires you to yeah very important bring out those stories so there will be street smart marketing which somebody is doing so you observe that write it and then put it in a form of a book yeah lovely so what is it that inspired you to write book on service tax and now the G gst uh, inspiration is a different thing something which uh, runs in your genes is something different you know so in the morning i had a release of my dad's book uh, uh, there was a book function in the morning uh, i think it runs in my genes so uh, it automatically came that writing flair it automatically came my father was an author and uh, yeah what inspires you to write in that way if you ask see uh, i i used to i run a website so i used to get a lot of questions throughout the website people used to ask us so many questions so i thought why not to gather all those questions one day and make it in a book that was my second book when i wrote okay so <clears throat> i wrote a book on all the questions what i got or i could imagine a person would ask on service tax and that book was a very uh, it's the sixth edition which has come now okay so that it's a very hot selling book it's known as the faq on service tax i have already done six editions of that okay so it inspires the the knowledge what people want to know uh, that is also which inspires me people come to us to us as a professional i answer so many questions but then then i feel that maybe everybody cannot afford a professional you know so that is how uh, that is the idea to write a write an article or write a book that at least let this this knowledge be shared okay uh, in the morning i was somebody quoted from my father uh, work ke main sahitya mein kuch lene nahi aaya hu dene aaya hu so here also in my books i have not come anything to i don't want anything i want to just give my knowledge or share my knowledge or solve people's problems that is what inspires me um so since now you guys have a hang of writing non fiction is uh, fiction in your mind that okay let's try this also um, like you said because once you start writing you get a nab of it Yeah. So, do you think that probably you can now give a hand at fiction as well? Uh, so, in my case, it's been on my mind. My son has been pushing me to write for quite some while, but uh, I I haven't yet been able to put it down. I have a couple of things in mind, but I don't really think I've uh, really uh, planned it out very well. Maybe someday down the line, I'm I'm a die-hard fan of crime fiction, but I think I'll. have to take a sabbatical to think out a crime that somebody has committed and then put it down into a book <laughs> but uh, a couple of life experiences uh, that have deeply moved me over the last couple of uh, years some personal health issues and uh, those have affected me and i i've been wanting to put them down on paper maybe a couple of short stories next year or so i I'll, i'll try to find out some time to do that <laughs> yeah for me it's difficult reason being is that he, you have corporate responsibility and you are not a full time writer so whatever time you permit you write and writing non fiction become easier than for writing fiction <laughs> yeah to hold yourself to that story is very difficult yeah so that's why it may be difficult at the at this moment of time to tell you that we may be venturing into a fiction writing yeah i am thinking of writing a book on that but so maybe it's between it's a fiction a and a non fiction based on certain facts uh few people know that i also worked with the narcotics control bureau uh as a as a narcotics officer for and some big cases we made in those days so i have got those memories in my and i want to come out with a book on the the fiction aspects as well as the fusion of the facts you know uh on on the the very interesting uh, uh rackets drug trafficking rackets what we busted in those years 
So I, I am planning to write a book. I am also planning to write, start writing poetry. I do do poetry. So I am planning to write a book, uh, maybe a poetry book very soon. So, Lovely. So yeah. maybe probably in next edition of uh, GLF, we might have sure. a session fiction you're, versus you're non-fiction. You're deadline, that means. <laughs> Uh, yeah, deadlines help. Yeah, deadlines help. Yeah, with a corporate background, I'm sure you can understand better how deadline helps. So, moving on to next, um, how has life probably changed or really changed after writing a book? Like you said that somebody came and told you, Are ye kab likha tumne? So, a feedback, a review, or a surprise expression, or something if you would like to, some experience which you would like to share, uh, which after your book has come out and has changed your life or affected you deeply. Uh, I wouldn't really say uh, life changing, uh, uh, of course it uh, felt like a personal achievement because uh, 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 though I had worked on a lot of research papers and published uh, several papers, this was the first full length book and uh, of course that gives one you a sense of accomplishment. But uh, I think uh, what uh, made my day was, I'll just read out. Uh, we had uh, some very good people uh, uh, giving us amazing reviews for our book and uh, um, for example, I'll just read out uh, what Mr. Sudhir Vasudeva, who is the chairman and managing director of ONGC, he said about our book. He says that uh, uh, reputation of a corporate house cannot be built overnight. Uh, it takes years of sustained efforts. Interestingly, like various other dimensions of a business, reputation can also be strategized, nurtured and developed for the gainful dividend, which is un understood by reading Corporate Reputation Decoded, and it's an excellent practical handbook in this regard. So these and other reviews sort of, uh, you know, they make your day. Uh, I wouldn't say it's exactly a life for changing experience, but uh, uh, it always feels good to have a book under your kitty. I'm more looking forward to the one I'm planning next because that's that's a subject closer to my heart. It's financial communication. Uh, I'll I'll only be able to tell you whether that changed my life after it comes out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you ask me about a certain, I add to what W was saying. It is very satisfying writing a book, and few incident to which happens in your life after writing a book, like you know people come and ask you when when is the next book coming. Yeah. So that shows that you have been doing a good job in your earlier books. But I'll tell you, tell you two incidents which happened and I got a letter of those two incidents, one in social media, one somebody wrote me a letter and posted it, right. The person wrote me, she is a professor in a college, somewhere in Arn, and one, she writes the story that, you know, one fine morning, I thought of resigning and she went and wanted to resign and she took the resignation letter with her and she was waiting for the dean and the director to uh, give her an appointment. In the meantime, I got hold of your new book, Half Glass Full, and I read it. And because it was 60 pages, I completed and I changed my mind not to resign. So that was the, one of the best, you know, feedback which I could ever get. And if somebody else's life changes, that's more important. And same, yeah, the same thing happened when somebody was traveling to Walsar and the boy wrote that, you know, I was resigning and I had given my resignation letter, but I was on the exit interview. But I went back and told him that, you know, I don't want to resign. I changed my mind. So I said, good. So that is what satisfying thing which can ever happen in your life here. Yeah. Lovely. But I think uh, my story is totally opposite. After writing the first book, I started getting letters across the country on questions on service tax. People in somewhere in Calcutta writing to me, people somebody from Assam writing to me, which I never imagined that somebody was going to write to me. No, not the mails, letters. Okay. And I thought, by Mary Bar to bhot kima tha yar. <laughs> what I am doing in the department and I resigned after writing the book. So it is a life changing thing for me. It is totally opposite to what yeah, yeah. I <laughs> so I resigned after that and I knew that I have a potential and there is a, there is a vacuum outside for people who have got knowledge and who can guide people. Okay. And uh, the journey started. You know, and then today we have got Pan India offices, so many people working for us and the business is booming. Just because of that book, it changed my life. No, great. So, yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I agree with you. I'd also like to add to that. You know, once the book was out, and uh, of course, in the Indian context, it's being read, but we, uh, we were actually contacted by a very senior professor from NYU Stern Business School. And uh, he said that uh, he, he himself is considered to be one of the greatest authors in this field. 
and then he said that we've got I've gone through your, uh, your book and I feel that it's such a a uh, wonderful combination of uh, practice and cases and theory and then he invited us to uh, you know sort of contribute to his own book so uh, in a way it helped that uh, what i felt fulfilling was that it was a global concept which we brought to india and then that rendering of the global con uh, concept in the indian context helped us to go global once more lovely um so i think we can now open for q and a so from the audience, um, all the non-fiction writers as well as fiction writers, if they have any questions, we have volunteer and they'll come to you and you can ask their questions. Hi, I just uh, want to ask about the marketing of the book. It's uh, very different in fictional and non-fictional because fictional you have something to sell. Here, does it ha need a corporate backing to sell this idea because your ideas are pretty corporatized. So uh, how did you market your book? All, all the three uh, topics are pretty different. Does it make a challenge? Is that a major challenge, the topic itself? GST per se is not consumption of the masses. Even sales pitch would not be something which is masses. So how did you appeal to the, uh, mar the, uh, on the marketing side? Before, he, uh, before Monish ji answers, let me just say on his behalf, last month uh, uh, I met one of India's top literary agents and we were talking about best-selling authors in fiction and how much, who earns how much, you know. And it was at that moment that he mentioned that uh, even X, Y, and Z, who are considered to be the best-selling authors of India, sell nothing compared to Monish Malla. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, I, I take the liberty of answering that question on your behalf. I, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the numbers, okay, see so how it works. It is, it is the current topic, a hot topic, what sells. You know, in non-fiction, such thing, you know. GST is the hot topic. Suppose you write a book on demonetization today and somebody publishes it tomorrow, and it is going to be sold in one hour. So it's the topic which is important, what you're writing. That is important. That is what I feel. The topic should be hot. And naturally, you should be uh, very true to your readers. You cannot write something which is which you don't believe and which is not truth. So truth is very important. You should write the facts first. And uh, to answer your question on a more technical note, uh, 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 I can only speak about my book because it is uh, you know uh, quasi academic, uh, and our publishers are sage. Uh, of course, it's uh, it has a niche audience, uh, being students of I am Ahmedabad who take the course and uh, people from the corporate area who would who are interested in it. If you have a publisher uh, who, who, who is a good, uh, good one, you know, Sage is one of the best publishers in the academic field, so they uh, tend to do a good job. We have not done any marketing for this book per se, uh, but of course it's the prescribed textbook for, the, for this course at time, and uh, that sort of ensures sales year after year. Yeah, uh, in my case, the, the case was entirely different. The, yeah, basically, my book, my objective was not to market the book. My objective was to reach more people. So how do we do that? So what we did is that, ki, first of all, I told the publisher, basically the Ahmedabad Management Association who came and invited to write a book. The only thing is that the book is for students, for youngsters who don't pay for books. Right? So what we did is that I will not charge a single money. But you have to do, you have to reduce the price of the book to half. The moment you do that, the thing is that the book will go ahead and the purpose was entirely different. So what happened, a lot of corporates came and they say Ki, we want motivation for our sales team, our people. So they started sponsoring those books. So they bought 2000 books together and they started putting it in their libraries. They wanted to share it with their employees and this is the way we entered the market. And same was the formula for the other books also. So you have to decide your prior priority and audiences also here. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, good evening, and thank you very much for this information that you gave today. Uh, my question is to Miss Desai. As to, uh, I think what I gather is this is for from the perspectives of the students or the people or the employees. It's not from the management side, uh, which I gather. But looking at the cases happening today, like the Sahara Group, the Tata Group, which the dent, the reputation going on fight. Okay. So don't you think they need more? Uh, 
uh, I think a book or information on such uh, courses rather than the students or the management. No, who in might, fact, uh, uh, yeah. sorry, please complete, sorry. Rather than people up here, the employees, they might or they might not be able to um, go through the teachings or the findings in the if they're not fit in the corporation, okay, or they might not be uh, allowed by the management, okay, regarding the reputation. Okay, so yeah. I'd just like to make a clarification. When I say it's a practitioner's handbook, uh, uh, of course, uh, it's going to be used by people who are in the driver's seat when it comes to taking decisions on corporate reputation. Because uh, 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 though it is a very strategic decision, uh, if you go through the book, there are elements to it which uh, some of which have decision-making authorities at mid-level management also. So when you talk about corporate social responsibility or you talk about media relations or you talk about government relations, these are areas which even, uh, it's not just limited to the C-suite. So our book targets uh, the C-suite when it comes to the strategy part of it and it's also equally useful for mid-level managers who will be taking the day-to-day -day decisions related to the the building blocks, there are nine building blocks to corporate reputation, the way we define it. And each department, for example, in investor relations. And even a person who is an investor relations executive or designated as manager or, uh, or even designated as, uh, he could be designated as CFO, he could be a manager, he could be senior manager, whatever his designation. If he is dealing with this function, reading this book helps him. And uh, because uh, we've interviewed a lot of uh, the people whom you've mentioned, the very people whom you've mentioned, I know for a fact that it has reached some of the people that you've mentioned. <laughs> okay. And let's hope they take some lessons from it. <laughs> Thanks. Any more questions we have? Uh, my question all of, for all of you. Uh, first question is that, uh, can we add creativity in non-fiction writing? And uh, second question is that, uh, there is a uh, very much misunderstanding about permanent account number, means PAN card, no? So, uh, there is a uh, good idea in my mind to write a book on particular PAN card. So, uh, is it, uh, what, is, will it succeed or not? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> creativity has got a place everywhere in the life. Mm. So, you can write a book only if you are creative. If you are creative, you can write a book. You know, so there is a place for creativity everywhere. In fact, writing a book is creativity. Okay. Let us not mix it that only uh, if you are writing a novel or poetry, then it's or doing a work, work of art is creativity. It's all creativity. This book starts with, my. I'll just read out, this book starts from with uh, what Plato said, you know, so it's 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 not a bland tax, uh, a taxation book. I wrote the beginning is the most important part of the work. So I start with that. Life can only be understood backwards. You are reading GST. Now, now you can understand. Life is only to be understood backward, but it must be lived forward. The truth is simple. All our knowledge is about the past and all our decisions are about the future. We have to learn from the past, we have to implement in the present and the results will be seen only in the future. As there is no mechanism to have instant results, we have to wait for the future to conclude, conclude whether our decisions were right or did we err. Life is a process where there is always a scope of improvement. No one is perfect. The same is true for the taxation laws. This is how I start. So it's creativity. So I, I'd also like to add to that, I, I totally agree, uh, see, uh, creativity is up to you and uh, I, I think it's unfair to assume that just because uh, we write non-fiction, it is something drab and totally uninteresting and it also depends upon your personal choice. Creativity can be brought in by sprinkling quotations or in our case, we have uh, described situations in companies which uh, when you read them, they read like stories. So, uh, non-fiction uh, non writing can be embellished to make it more creative. You just need to have the knack for it and you need to uh, sort of uh, uh, put yourself in the reader's shoes and imagine what would make this concept more palatable, what would go, make it go down easier and in a more interesting way and the creativity will flow.
Um, Sanjay ji, would you also like to I'll add to the to question? Both of them, both of them, because it's a form of communication. Any book, and if I want to reach you, I need to be creative, or I should understand what you like, and according to that, I have to communicate that message to you, right? And nothing should stop you about not not writing that book which you thought about. Lovely. Um, I think we'll wrap up the session over here as we are running late. Great. In case there are any other questions which you wish to ask, uh, our dignitaries will be there on the left side of the stage. So we can continue the Q&A session over there. Let's have a huge, huge round of applause for all three of them. I hope it really helped all the fiction and non-fiction writers and gave us little inspiration and motivation. And next year along with them, we might have a couple of more non-fiction writers over here on the stage. We'll be starting our next session Thanks, in two to three minutes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we'll just take a breather for two minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening.